Governor John Kasich will officially join the GOP field. The swing state governor is already being called a dark horse candidate and has a near-perfect election record. The only blemish running against another Republican named Bush, MSNBC political correspondent Casey Hunt, looks at why this time could be different. I like to tell Republicans, and sometimes they don't like to hear it, you are not going to fix the basic problems of this country without both parties being involved. Ohio Governor John Kasich can sound pretty different from the 15 other Republicans running for president. Just read Matthew 25. Did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? If we're doing things like that, to me, that is conservatism. He doesn't necessarily govern like them either. He expanded Medicaid under Obamacare, favors a path to citizenship for undocumented immigrants. But at the end of the day, it may be necessary. I, I'm, I'm open to it, I will tell you that. And even voted for an assault weapons ban. Sometimes as a leader, you got to you got to walk a lonely road. This could be a tough sell with conservative primary voters. But Kasich has been elected twice in the state that all but decides the general election. I won 86 out of 88 counties. Cuyahoga County, which President Obama won by 40 points, I carried. Kasich grew up near Pittsburgh, the son of a mailman. He was raised Catholic but drifted from religion until both his parents were killed by a drunk driver. I search for what the Lord wants me to do. And I know that my purpose on this earth, whether I'm the governor or whether I'm a has-been, is to bring about a healing. He went to Ohio State, then served nine terms in Congress. He led the Budget Committee during the contentious fiscal fights of the 1990s, ultimately playing a key role in balancing the budget. And the gimmicks stop delaying and balance the federal budget. That set the stage for his first presidential campaign, but he struggled to raise money and quickly dropped out to endorse George W. Bush. What did you learn from running against George W. Bush in 2000? Well, I was too young, I didn't have any money, and uh, hadn't accomplished much. Now many Republican voters know him from the Fox News show he hosted before he was governor. The key questions, whether he has the discipline for a long campaign, and whether the man who once got thrown out of a Grateful Dead concert can keep his prickly personality from getting in the way. My wife is sitting, who was my girlfriend at the time, sitting at home and CNN comes on and says, we got a story about the congressman and the Grateful Dead. And she's like, that better not be John. <laughs> <laughs> so Casey joins us now from Ohio, a big announcement. And Casey, what do you think um, his strategy is to break through? Well, Mika, he, on paper, looks like he should easily rise to the top of this field, right? Governor of Ohio, we ran through how he won uh, a lot of places in this key general election state uh, that Democrats may have won in the past. But the problem is that there's, there's just not a lot of oxygen in this room right now. Donald Trump is taking up a lot of it. His advisors will privately say that they really need Jeb Bush to make a big mistake for Kasich to be able to break mm. out. They, of course, uh, are saying that the top four being Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Scott Walker, and they hope that they can add John Kasich to that list. They also acknowledge that if they're going to do it, it's likely to be in New Hampshire. This is not a guy that can really sell himself too easily with Iowa conservatives. I mean, when you think about his policy initiatives, Medicaid, for example, he didn't just agree to expand it. He fought with a Republican legislature to push that through. So I think there are definitely some potential issues there with conservatives. New Hampshire, on the other hand, could potentially be a place where he could break out. So, Joe, you served with him. Um, what do you make of his candidacy? Uh, some might see it as futile. You, you never know. I mean, John Kasich, is, I mean, it's very personal for me. John Kasich's the reason I decided to run. Uh -huh. uh, I saw him actually on C-SPAN during the 93 budget battle with Tim Penny and decided that that's what I wanted to do, that I wanted to help uh, him balance the budget and, uh, and got up to Washington and was very excited to work with him. I think for anybody that knows John Kasich, he is an inspirational guy. There is the question, does he have the discipline to run a presidential campaign over many, many months? Uh, but I, I think if he does, uh, he's the sort of guy that could catch fire in New Hampshire. He won't, he won't do it the traditional way. He'll, he'll do it town hall meeting by town hall meeting, voter by voter, handshake by handshake. And you could turn around if he works really, really hard. You could turn around uh, early next year and see Kasich in there in the, you know, top, top uh, two or three. And, and let, let's see what happens. But it's not going to be easy for him. 
Uh, but this field, and just, just look at the numbers, this field is wide open. It is still wide open, and anything can happen. Yeah, there's so many candidates, uh, Amy. You so many candidates, so many choices for GOP voters. But also, if you compare and contrast the national numbers with the primary numbers. So we've been talking about Donald Trump and how he's surging past his competitors. But in Iowa, Scott Walker has a yep. nine-point lead on Trump. So you also have to look at it state by state. I feel like he's the one to watch. Richard, did you have a point? And there's also John Kasich. Even if it doesn't work out at the presidential level, a lot of people think he would be right. the ideal vice presidential right. candidate, given how strong he is in a state called Ohio. Casey Hunt, thank you so much. Richard Haas, thank you as well.